There are some kids, uh, they, they walk in the room and they like, uh, you know, hey, John. No, I'm not dead. No, you John. You, you John because, because we don't really have a relationship. The problem with God in text is, I'm not, God said, I'm not an absentee father. I'm, I'm not an absentee. God said, I've been there for you. I've raised you. I've supported you. I've been there for you. But the problem that I'm receiving, all that I'm having with you is, you don't really honor me. Then he goes on uh, in verse six and he says, listen, a servant honors his master. Uh, and basically what he's saying is uh, when you work for your boss, when your boss walk in the room, you honor your boss. When the boss says, hey, listen, we need to have a meeting with everybody. Everybody shuts down what they're doing. They come into the room and they say, yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, and they honor, they, they honor their master. They honor the boss. Uh, so if I'm working for somebody and my boss comes in or asks me to do something, I'm going to do uh, what my boss asks me to do because my through my boss, I'm able to live the lifestyle that I live. And God says, listen, I support you. I fund you. I'm, I take care of you. It's because of me, you and your family eat. The problem is that when I come in, I don't get no respect from you. You offer polluted bread upon my altar and then you say, it ain't really polluted, like it ain't that bad. Uh, so I want you to notice in verse six, it was about how you treat me. It was about honor. You don't give me any honor. When he moves to verse seven, he talks about giving. He says, the things that you're trying to give me and the, and the way that you're trying to recognize me is, is also disrespectful. So uh, normally, if, if, if I was going to invite you uh, over my house and I say, hey, listen, we want to I, I want to I want to prepare a, a meal uh, for all of you. I want all of you all to come over to the house uh, and I just need to I just need to check. Uh, do you like uh, do you like chicken or beef with your Roman? Which which I'm cooking. Don't worry, I'm cooking. I just need to know. Do you like beef? Do, do you do beef or chicken? Which, okay, don't worry, I'll mix it. We'll put them, we'll put them together. I got a little bread, we'll put all of that together. Uh, and so I, I invite you, I invite you over and, uh, and, and, and I give you some, and I give you some milk, but the milk is, the, the milk is expired. And then, and then I, I, I give you some spaghetti. I give you some spaghetti. But the, but the beef, the, the, the beef is, is probably about four or five months old. I cooked it anyway. I cooked it anyway. And even when I cooked it, I didn't really cook it all the way. I didn't cook it all the way through. And I left the spaghetti in. I left the spaghetti in a little bit long, so it's a little soft. But, but that's okay, because I cooked some cornbread with the milk. I cook, <laughs> I, cook, I cook some cornbread so, so the soft spaghetti, so the soft spaghetti, it, it, it'll be okay because you just put the cornbread with it and it'll make it, it, it'll make it a, a little thicker. And then what I, what I did, I went, I, went to, I went to Walmart and I got, you, I got you some dessert. I got you a pie, but I didn't get the pie that was, was on, the, on a display. They have a discounted section. At, at Walmart where you got a few hours before they, like they were actually finna throw it away. And I said, no, 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 give me that. And, Cause it was half off. And then I brought that and, 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 I, and I prepared this, this wonderful, I prepared this wonderful for meal for you. And, and then I give it to you. And then I'm offended that you're not eating. And so I'm, 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 I'm confused because I'm so, wait a minute, is everybody on a diet? Is everybody? And it's, not, and it's not that you're on a diet. It's not that you're on a diet. It's that you've observed what I presented to you and it's not what? It's not, it's not acceptable. And so one of the things that you're thinking about is when you were thinking to give this to me, 
Were you really thinking about me? Here's the sad part. If I was thinking about you, your sadness is, you really think that less of me? That you would serve me? Spoiled milk? Spoiled meat? That you would give me expired desserts? And then present it as if it's fresh? I want you to notice the text. You offer what kind of bread? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and then you turn around with amnesia and say, uh, where is it polluted? I don't see. You don't see the mold? And you know how some people do. Oh, you can just scrape that. <laughs> I mean, if you're hungry, though. If, you, if you're really hungry, you do what you need to do. Some people say, well, just, 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 scrape, that, just, just scrape that off. Just put a little, mm -mm. put some butter over top of it and make it, it make it better. And God says, God says, in that you say, the table of the Lord is what? The word contemptible means cheap, which means what they were saying is, you don't have to do all of that for the Lord. Some people may try to treat you that way and try to tell you that you're contemptible and you say, no, 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 raise my price. You can't talk to me and give me anything. There are some institutions and some places that you can go, they'll try to just give you anything. Have anybody ever seen a package in the mail and you received the package in the mail and it was kind of, and then you called and said, hey, listen, I need to send this because that's, that's not what I, I paid for. Have anybody ever ordered a sandwich? And then you opened up. Have anybody ever ordered something through drive-thru? And, and you know what you should have did? Before you drove off, you should have looked, you sh you looked in the bag. And then you looked in there and you say, now what is, what is this? And then you realize it was a bunch of teenagers working tonight. He said, ah, oh, I needed to, I need to go talk to, I need to go bring this, I need to go bring this back. And so what God is having a problem with is, I don't like how you make choices about me. I don't like how you see me. I don't like how you got it in your head that I don't care how you talk. I don't care what you do. You ever hear people say, God understands or God knows my heart. What you're saying is he's cheap. God is cheap. And even though I may not be everything, it's okay, I can still get into heaven. You can't, you can't tell me that everybody that passes away, oh, they can just get into heaven because heaven's cheap. Somebody, uh, uh, there, there, was a, there was a musical artist uh, uh, that passed away. If you listen to his music, you couldn't play any of his music in the Lord's house. So how are you going to say Oh, I know he made it in. You know? Get off your confidence and let's say, by the mercy of the Lord, maybe. But what you did for a living and, and, and how you uh, uh, op operated. Uh, I don't know if any, many of you who remember, uh, 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 I can't even say his name because I'm, I'm a Christian. Uh, <laughs> Hugh, Hugh Hefner. Is it, anybody? The Playboy's Mansion. And somebody said, oh, I know he's up there. And I said, oh, wait a minute. You know what you're doing? You're making heaven cheap. You're, you're lowering the price so anybody can get in. And God says, I'm better than that bread you're trying to give me. The amount of attention you're supposed to give me and you kind of halfway give me your heart. You're halfway devoted to me. You're really not serious about dedicating. I'm, I'm better than what you're giving me. Here we are in verse 8. And if you offer the what? The blind for sacrifice. When it was time to sacrifice for the Lord, they would look for an animal. When they would look for the animal, how do you get the blind one? How you get the blind animal? Imagine having all of these fine breeds and it's time uh, to, to give a present to the Lord. 
and the one you pick is the one that's scarred and maimed and blind. And God looks at the sacrifice and says, so this is what you think about me? This, this is what you're giving me? I'm not better than this. You know what some people are worried about right now? Some people are fearful and they sitting in there. They would have come to worship, but they sitting in their house right now and they don't know what to do. And the only one that can help is God. Even when professionals come on, on, online or they, or they get on the television and they t start talking, they don't know what to, they don't know how to fix it. Because you know what? God knows how to orchestrate a problem that's beyond anybody's skill level or, or experience or education. And so they say, you know what? Uh, we, we've kind of seen it before, but nothing like this before. This is, this is new to us and we're, we're trying to find a solution. Basically, you have all of these people who are millionaires and billionaires and those who are distinguished and those who have accomplished and they got medals and plaques all on the wall and they all stand together saying, wash your hands. <laughs> That's what you came up with. You, you've been all, the whole world is at recess. The whole world is on recess. Nobody's in class. Everything is shutting down and the only thing, the only answer that you can give to the whole world, you can't even go to Italy. <laughs> they won't even let you, there's some people right now, they're stuck in certain cities because they're saying, listen, you can't, and, and there's no answer but wash your hands. God knows how to orchestrate a problem. I don't think y'all realize how much y'all need me. I don't think you realize how much I control and how little you are in control. I'll shut the whole world down over something you can't even see. Nobody's ever even seen it. You can't even point at it. At least with an enemy, you can point at it and say, oh, there, there it go. But you can't even see it. And you got people walking around in paranoia. Let somebody call. <coughs> and everybody, oh, oh, no, no, no. I don't know. It. You don't even know where to go. I'm walking, walking through the store. And we got a little bit, I'm trying to. We, you, and at some point, you got to say, God, you just got to take care. God, I just, I just trust in God, I trust in you. I don't think you, I don't think, God said, I don't think you realize how much I take care of you. I'm the one that shields you from things they haven't even identified yet. You know, it's a crazy thing. There are 4,000 deaths a day. There are 4,000 deaths a day. There are 4,000 deaths a day from car crashes. More people die from getting in the car than people who have died from this virus. Right? Sometimes you can be so consumed about this, you don't even realize God keeping you safe from all the other stuff that you weren't even paying attention to. I take care of you. He says, uh, uh, he says this, is it not evil for you to give me what you're trying to give me? That makes you evil. When you give God less than his value, you become an evil person. And you offer the lame and the sick. Is that not evil? Offer it to your governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of the choices that you made, God says, I have to reject you. I have to say no to you because what you're trying to give me is beneath my value. I've stated this before. One of the things that the banks do in order to keep their value, one of the things that banks do to keep their value if you come with counterfeit money, if you come with counterfeit money to the bank 
and you said, I want to make a deposit, the first thing that they do is they take your money and I say, could you just hold one, one moment? Could you just hold? They take your money and they go to a little machine and they put your money in a little machine. And, say, and, and it identifies and, and it'll notify something may be wrong. And then sometimes they'll take it and they'll put it up to the light and they have a little special marker that they do and, and they're supposed to mark it. It's supposed to turn a certain color. And if they, if they do it, they'll say, you know what? We can accept these bills, but you're going to have to take this one back. They said, no, no, I need, to, I need to make a full deposit. We understand. I'll count it again. Okay. Yeah, we can accept these, but you're going to have to take, you're going to have to take this one back. So why, why are you going to take this one back? We're not even going to arrest you. We're not even going to call nobody on you. But you need, to, you need to take this and we can't deposit it. And the reason why we can't deposit it is because at the end of the day, we have to reconcile. And so what we'll end up communicating is, we'll, we'll end up communicating we have this much money. But because you gave us something fake, in reality, we only have this much. So what ends up happening is, if we receive what you're trying to give us, we will think that we're this valuable when actually we're this valuable. So in order to maintain our integrity and to be accurate about our value, we have to reject anything that's false. So that at the end of the day, when we reconcile, we will have a true picture of our value. The reason why you have to tell some people no is so that you can maintain your value. There are some people that may try to enter into your life and they try to sell you something cheap or they try to treat you in a particular way that lowers your value. By you exercising no, you can maintain your value and not cheapen your value. But if you accept things that are not in a line with your value, at the end of the day, you've already lowered your value. And so what the bank does politely is, please take that. You know what the ATM does? The ATM says, uh, not recognized. That's a, that's, a, that's a sweet and kind way for you to share those things with certain people. Hey, I'm sorry. Uh, what you're trying to give me is not recognized and I, and I can't receive it. If God has that standard, then we need to raise our standard. He says, I'm no longer accepting an offering at your hand. I, I want you to hear what I'm saying. God says, I'm no longer accepting an offering at your hand. Bible says, you get to make the choice of what decisions you want to make. You get to sit down right now and plan whatever decisions you want to make. And if we're connecting this to prosperity, God is saying make whatever decisions you want to make. But I need you to understand that after you've made up your mind what you want to do, it's up to me of whether or not I'll take you there. Right. So notice my steps don't belong to me. My steps belong to God. So in order for me to be prosperous, what do we say prosperity is? It means to advance. It means to grow. Every Christian should want to advance. Every Christian should want to grow. The Bible says in your heart, you can devise where you want to go and what you want to do. Your choices mean a lot. And when God looks at your heart and he looks at some of the choices that you're making, he directs your steps. Have you ever wanted to go in a particular way and God was taking you away from where you were going? And your heart and your mind was focused on a particular thing and God started leading you in a different direction? What happens when your heart and God's plans don't match? What happens when your choices bring you destruction? 
And God, in order to save you, he has to reroute your steps and break your heart. And you say, God, this is what I want to do. Yeah, but what you want to do and how you process is not healthy. And so God starts changing your steps and start going in a different way. When God was talking to those in Malachi, he says, I don't like the way you think about me. And then your choices are disrespectful to me. You got to understand when you make a choice, God is going to respond to you. Do you know how powerful your choices are? When you wake up in the morning and whether you decide where you're going to uh, scroll through your phone and worry about the day, or you decide that when you wake up in the morning, I'm going to pray to God and leave it at his feet. Yeah. The choices that you make, God responds to those. And God looks at your heart. God sees what's important to you. God sees what you value. Every choice, if you've lived any amount of time, you probably wish you can go back and make some different choices. There are some choices that you can make you can easily recover. It's a bad choice. You had, what you ate for lunch, you can recover from that. That was a bad choice. There are some choices that you make in life, it takes years to recover. And one thing that we have to start realizing is that every choice that you make is extremely valuable. Every phone call, every person that you talk to, if you decide to change careers, if you, if you decide to move, if you decide to move forward, if you decide to move back, if you say, God, I want to go do this, God, I want to go do, God is looking at all of your heart's uh, thoughts and decisions. But God says, I need you to understand something. Even though that's set in your heart, I'm going to have the final say. Stop trying to figure it out all by yourself. And in all thy ways, do what? You have to, in everything that you do, you have to think about God. The problem in Malachi is they were not thinking about God, but they wanted to be prosperous. They were trying to give God the leftovers and keep the best for themselves, and they did not consider God, so the decisions they were making were causing them to suffer. How many of you are suffering because of the decisions that you're making and you get to a point, why am I making the same bad decisions over and over and over again? When you take accountability to your decisions, you know one thing that you say? You say, you know what? I own my situation. The reason why I'm in this state and the reason why I'm dealing with some of these things is because I've made a lot of decisions. And some of the decisions that you made were not wise. There are some of you, you're, you're trying to climb yourself out of a hole of decisions you made in the last decade. You made 10 years worth of decisions and now you've come to a revelation that you may want to be better now. You may want to be stronger now. You may want to be closer to God now. But you got 10 years worth of, of bad decisions and demons that you're trying to shake off. And so the Bible says in all your ways, you need to what? You need to acknowledge him. Don't lean to your own understanding. When you think about honoring God, God wants the best of you. God doesn't want the leftovers. God doesn't want you to wear yourself out all weekend long and then come on the first day of the week and say, oh, I'm tired, but I need to get some rest because I'm going to give the best of myself to Monday. And God didn't get the best of you on his day. What do we say all the time? Sunday is not the end of the week. It's the first day of the week. I'm supposed, matter of fact, this is, I'm supposed to be my best this day and then I'll give the world the rest of it and watch God take care of me the rest of the way. So, so the Bible says a man, he divides us in his heart, but it's that God that gives the answer. So I'm going to give you this picture and let be yours. Every man in here, every man that you know, every man that you know that's single, has the freedom. Every man that you know that's single has the freedom to propose to any woman that they want. Right? Every man that's single can go up to any woman that's on the face of the earth and get down on one knee 
and say, will you marry me? Okay, now, the proposal is the man's choice. But just because you propose, have you, ever, have you ever seen something online and the man got in front of, and all the friends and the family came over and I just want to let you know that I love you uh, so much and I just, I, I, really, I really think the world of you and everything. And will you marry me? And she said, she said, she said, get up, get up, don't. <laughs> she said, no, 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 you don't, you don't want to do this. Get, get up, get up. We didn't. We need to get out of here. Come on, get, get, get up. Let's, let's, let's go. Um, and, and, and you can propose, but the Bible says, but the answer comes from the Lord. 